Welcome back to Five Things. Today, my guest is Jeff Holland. How are you doing, yeah, Jeff? I'm doing great. I'm really excited to be here. I love the show. Are you, are you really excited? I really am excited. All right. I'm so excited, John. <laughs> I'm five scared. things. Five things <laughs> about Azure Functions. <laughs> You ask me to jump, I say how high, John. This is this is what I come this here awesome, for. This is awesome, man. Will you? I got so many things I could ask you to do now. I know you really could. As long as we get them all on camera, then I'm happy. This is great. Thing number one: Azure Functions. It's free. It's free. That's the thing. We're not going to bury the lead here, John. Azure Functions is free as long as you stay under the monthly limits, but it's very generous. So you can do a million executions with Azure Functions, run your code serverlessly without paying anything, 400,000 gigabyte seconds of compute, and only after that you start paying like fractions and fractions of a cent. So Azure Functions is fantastic if you have some job, some API, and you're like, look, I don't want to have to take out, like this is my own personal website, I don't really want to be spending a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is for those types of calls, Azure Functions is super economical. Great. Thing number two, what languages can you use? Uh, many languages, and some new ones we've just recently announced. So JavaScript, both in Node 8 and 10. Mm -hmm. and this is great because it means that you can pull in any NPM packages. Mm -hmm. However you're used to developing your projects, the frameworks, the libraries you like, you can take advantage of those in your functions. Python, we have Python 3.6 oh, cool. right now. Yeah, so some cool machine learning type scenarios, scripting scenarios. .NET, so C Sharp, F Sharp, Java. I think I got them all. All right, uh, no, that's COBOL? Them. no COBOL. No COBOL yet. Functions? Yes, no COBOL right. yet. Uh, that community is very loud, though. They they know how to find me. They'll keep knocking on my door saying we want COBOL functions. It'll come Call one me day. when you got COBOL, man. Yeah. <laughs> Thing number three. Can you run functions locally, or do you have to be in the cloud all, all times? Uh, this is one of the awesome things about Azure Functions. So we have what's called the runtime. That's the thing that runs your code. It triggers it. That's completely open source. And you can run it all locally. You can debug it all locally so that if you want to quickly test something out, you don't have to worry about installing anything complex like running Docker, doing these weird gymnastics. You just say, I'm ready to do my Azure Functions project, set breakpoints, debug, everything super familiar. So it feels just like writing a on quick a Mac, script. On a Mac, on Windows? Mac, Windows, everything. On I a use, plane? Can you do it on a plane? You can do it on a plane. Can you do it on a boat? You, you can do it with a fox. Can you do it with a goat? With a mouse awesome. in a box. <laughs> With green eggs and ham, in fact. <laughs> Thing number four. VS Code, uh, I love it. I live in it. That's where I live and breathe. Can you do functions there, and what can you do? Yeah, this is one of my favorite things. Visual Studio Code team and us have built a first-class extension. So you can create functions. You can deploy your functions. You can even stream logs from them in the cloud. So everything you need to do, all in Visual Studio Code, it feels super natural. It's just one of those amazing extensions in that gallery. So wait, you can take a function, build it, which is, I couldn't kind of expect that, but then you can deploy it. And afterwards, I can actually stream the logs from yes, the live yeah. functions locally? You never even have to leave VS Code, and you can do like the full application cycle. Right, I got to try that out. Yeah, awesome. you should. Thing number five. So there's these things called bindings mm -hmm. in Azure Functions. And explain to me what they do and why I'd want to use them. Yeah, so bindings is this nice construct inside of Functions where if you need to communicate with other services, like, hey, at the end of this function, I need to send a text message, or I want to drop something into Cosmos DB, bindings let you do that without writing code for it, without having to figure out that SDK. Hey, how do I go talk with Twilio? You just go into your metadata of your function locally or in the cloud and say, hey, I want to bind to Twilio. I want to bind to Cosmos DB, to queues, to topics, uh, to storage, whatever else you might need to be dropping. And you pretty much just set a variable in your function and will do the heavy lifting of actually sticking so in the service. So it sounds like a supercharged API, specifically uh, targeting like Twilio or Cosmos and other things. Yeah, exactly right. Making your life even easier. Cool. No code? No code. I like code, though. <laughs> Less code. <laughs> Less Only code. the code you want to write. All right, I can deal with that. Yeah. Hey, Jeff, thanks for coming on. It's been great to be here. Appreciate that. Ah. And thanks for teaching us about five things about serverless and Azure Functions.